I'm good to go. Whatever you into it. All right, we're underway. We've got uh, yeah. Robert Robert Dunn from November and he's on back on the podcast, mate. How did yesterday go? Your swinging golf clubs was it successful or you're in the yeah, team? Yeah, it was, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I um, I and I sometimes I do, but um, I wasn't um, I didn't take part myself yesterday. I just um, just ran it with uh, with my brother who works for me. But there's um, mate, it was great. We're sort of into this third year of our what we call the Movember Masters Golf Series and um, went back to Waipu for the third year in a row, which is cool. And it's a, it's a bit of a destination golf course, really, just on the coast, beautiful spot. Um, and we always get a good turnout. And, and it's, yeah, it's been a successful addition to Movember, really. And sort of, obviously, there's a fundraising element to it, which is great, but also it serves a couple of other purposes. It's... Um, you know, it allows us to talk about men's health outside of November as well. We have tournaments in November, but we also, we have them October through to the end of March. So um, it gives us that opportunity to, to talk about men's health outside of our traditional window. And also, um, you know, we're really big on, on uh, blokes being socially connected, you know, spending a decent amount of time with each other. And, and like when you think about it, that's exactly what golf's all about. You've got to spend three or four hours um, with someone on the golf course and, um, you know, hopefully over the course of that time you're able to have um, some good yarns about all things of life. So so that's why we do it is to kind of give blokes that platform and, and we theme up the day in, in that regard. And it's socially competitive. It's three-man Ambrose and there's, um, you know, so there's a few carrots there as well for people who do well and we have a finals weekend um, down in Queenstown, so which is cool because we're all competitive beasts, blokes. So you know it's mm. nice to have something on it, but um, but also it's um, you know it's true team golf. So you've got to um, you know you've really got to do it as a do it as a team and do it with your mates. So so yeah, it's it's been it's been good fun to add something else in the mix. Nice. I said I heard you say there three hours for golf, mate. Last time I played Ambrose, we were there all day. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, mate. Yeah, well, yeah, actually, probably that's a bit generous. We normally do get around the way we've set it up in about four, but yeah, yeah, you do have to encourage some guys sometimes to, uh, you know, uh, stop looking for the balls so much when they're <laughs> playing it all over the shop and, and uh, you know, finish the beers in the clubhouse. So, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, it's good fun. Nice. So, you mentioned the third year running. How's it sort of building into it? Um, are guys sort of starting to get into their work straight away, do you think? Yeah, um, yeah, they are, I think. Like, um, you just, it's another one of those things, like, Movember's a, you know, predominantly an online activity, you know, online peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform, and, and through the website, through our comms, through our EDMs and our newsletters and all that stuff, you know, that's our opportunity to, to try and get that key messaging to blokes, but you can't be face-to-face, -face. you know, you just can't be catching up with decent amounts of people face to facing being able to to give them that bit more detail and it gets more bit more personal and a bit more real and the thing i'm noticing like to your point like a hundred percent like um you know we've we've got a group of uh, people in new zealand at the moment anyway who are absolutely um up for the challenges and and really keen to acknowledge the issues and and they're well past that and they want to do something about it so um being in the golf day that is themed a men's health event um, and embracing it for that is is going really really well and um, I was a bit um, apprehensive a little bit uh, almost in some you know dare I say sometimes it's a little bit easier to do sort of health by stealth and do it through online platforms and and hope that the the messaging is resonating and getting to people but um, it's been great to to talk to people face to face and the guys who come up to you and tell them tell you their stories and their motivations for getting involved today. Um, can be pretty raw, but they're, they're definitely um, people are up for sharing um, those experiences, which is gives me real motivation. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, I we said about face to face and getting getting together. I, I'm a member of the Deer Talk Association here in Hastings, and sort of Wednesday night was just about uh, cleaning up the club rooms and then having a barbecue and stuff. And you know, I sort of thought that oh, I'd be an hour or so, but ended up having a great yarn with with a bunch of like-minded people and, and it was interesting. We didn't really talk about hunting. We were, we were talking about other stuff and just being around guys, having a laugh and then the, the feeling afterwards was just sensational. Went home with a smile on my face, the stresses of the world were gone. So, um, yeah. yeah, as you said, there's a, as a online movement, there's a lot to be said for getting, getting the people together and 
and now making it a regular thing. Um, how, how do you see this sort of competitive side of the Movember Masters uh, coming along? Mate, it's, it's actually, I think it's an important part of it. Like that's, you know, for a lot of people, not everyone, but for lots of fellas, that's what makes you tick a little bit. You love that competitive element and we call it, you know, the most socially competitive golf series in the world, um, you know, and, and that's exactly what it is. And, and um, it's, it's good to have that competitive element. The, winning, the winner of each tournament gets invited to the finals weekend. We score it through, all the scoring's done through mobile app and with live leaderboards. So you put in your score and then you can see how you're going against the field on the day. So you actually, you know, people pretend like they don't, but they keep their eyes on it every hole and see how they're going. If it's not trying to win the tournament, it's trying to beat another group of mates who they know is on the course. Um, and we play two teams of three, play together on each hole. So we're really encouraging that social interaction. So you play with mates, you meet a group of guys that you haven't met before, um, and you just have exactly to the point you've just made um, you have that chat, but, you know, absolutely men are competitive beasts and um, to have that, um, that, uh, that carrot, and it's a great carrot, like we go down to um, Queenstown, play Millbrook, um, mm. and, you know, it's an amazing part of the world and people are really keen to try and be a part of that weekend. So it works really well, but also because it's, it's a charitable thing, it's for men's health, um, we set the scene when we get there. Um, that um, there's no one, um, you know, there's also no one, no one takes it too far, you know, like everyone plays it in the spirit and they don't, um, but, you know, we all um, are there predominantly for the cause and the, the competitive element is a, a close second, I would say. Nice. And so is this something that's being modelled elsewhere with, with the Movemba community or is this something that's special to, to you guys here in New Zealand? Yeah, some, we, we wanted to, um, we wanted to bring in a new element to Movemba New Zealand. We wanted to, um, you know, as I said, have an excuse to talk about men's health outside of our traditional window. Um, I love a bit of golf, so I had a good understanding of the sport. Um, we thought Ambrose would be a good format. We played around with it a little bit, added a few unique elements, and I, it's sort of a little bit like um, Movember, like uh, charity is a traditional thing, but Movember is a little bit non-traditional within that, within that space. Golf's a traditional thing. Everyone, whether you've got a handicapped member of a club or whether you just like to have... Um, you know, one or two rounds a year. We actually all love a hit of golf, or a lot of guys love a hit of golf. So we look to combine all those things. It had to be team golf. It had to be golf with your mates for your mates, which is our slogan for it. And it um, and it's got a lot of unique elements from scoring through your phone, which a lot of people hadn't done. We played the two holes up on the green. So when you get up on the green, there's two holes in play. So it helps you score really well. Mm. Um, helps us play really quickly. So we get through the get through the round, you know, relatively quickly. Um, and so, yeah, we're starting to do a few trials in Australia because um, it's been successful here. And so we're looking at bringing the format in in Australia and, and bringing their winners over um, to the finals weekend over here in, in Queenstown and just building it, building it up slowly. But um, yeah, mate, it's been, it's been successful. And as I said that, um, you know, I just, I've been doing Movember um, coming up nine years and, you know, I just, every year you become, um, you know, you believe a little bit more in the power of the conversation just because of um, what people are prepared to share with you and, and tell you about why they're getting involved in Movember itself or, or a different part of it. And um, you realise, actually, you know, the more platforms you can create for men to be able to do that, the better. And like you talk about your experience at the Deer Stalkers, um, you know, I think a massive part of, of um, or one of the best preventative tools we have available to us is community it doesn't matter whether it's a sport whether it's a hobby whether it's culture whatever it is if you can surround yourself with you know like-minded people you know where you have some sort of um shared interest you know yours deer stalking but a golf over here could be anything um i think then you have a it makes it easier to have an initial conversation around that interest and then i think you're more likely for your second and your third conversations to be um open and honest about whatever it may be. And, and I 100% agree with what you said so many times I go away from some of the, um, some of our public events, whatever they may be, whether it's a Movember launch or whether it's a Movember Masters golf tournament and just encouraged by what people um, are prepared to share with me and, and um, some of the things that they're doing to look after themselves. So 
yeah, I see real value in it. Yeah, man, uh, it's uh, like you said that second and third conversations where, where the meat is, and it's it is really really awesome, especially being you know as we're talking off the yeah yeah sorry. Um, young father moving to a new place um, don't quite have the family with me but to, to meet a bunch of guys that have either gone through it or, or have been through it or you know are now on to the, the second round with, with grandchildren and things like that it's just awesome to sort of create those you know um, stories of, of normality that, you, that you're not going crazy and, and actually uh, you can get through it and you do survive <laughs> yeah no I think it's um yeah, I think it's a, a fantastic thing. And even though it sounds sort of reasonably straightforward, it's perhaps a part of our life that isn't as common as it used to be. You know, we hear a lot of chat um, and statistics thrown at us around participation and in, in a lot of sports and things like that is dropping a little bit. Um, mm. You know, a lot of rural country clubs or rural sports clubs are perhaps not as thriving or as big as they used to be. And that's, that's those places where after a hard day's work, you used to go down and you might be feeling a little bit frustrated or have the weight of the world on your shoulders. But if you can go and, you know, um, down to the local club, whatever it is, have a yarn to the boys who might be in exactly the same spot, problem shared is, is a problem on its way to being solved. Um, mm. But we're perhaps not doing that as much as we used to. So I, I would, you know, for my kids growing up, um, I don't care what sport they play. I don't care what it is. Um, and it doesn't have to be sport. It can be cultural, it can be whatever. But being involved in something is a non-negotiable, I think, um, just because you've got to have those EQ skills. And, and I think if you've got those, then you'll be um, able to take on some of the more significant things in life later on if you get that ingrained into you as a young person. Mm, yeah, and I think also, you know, when, when you get home and it's that, that teamwork of the home, you know, you're better able to show up because, uh, you know, you're not boxing up those emotions and, and lashing out on those emotions that you're holding on to. Um, you've actually been able to, like you say, um, get them somewhere on the way to being solved and and, and feel better about it. And then you can, uh, as you say, keep keep fronting on with life, which um, at times can mount up and be where, as you said, when there's no longer that place to go, uh, it, it's it's in some cases having you know disastrous effects, if not if not in a, in a small level affecting people's quality of life and and, and then the downstream effects of that as well. Oh, I couldn't agree more, mate. Like, um, you know, it's fantastic if you can solve something or get on the way to solving it, but just the ability to share it or, or get it off your chest a little bit um, is, you know, cannot be um, underestimated as a tool. Um, and if we're just, like you say, going around in a vicious cycle where um, you're grinding, bottling it up, going home, um, a little bit frustrated, and you just repeat that cycle time and time again, um, then, you know, and, and yeah, at the worser end of the scale, um, things of real significance can happen. Um, but also, you just get stuck in a rut. And I think you know any any opportunity to um, talk about what's going on um, in any shape or form is is a good thing. So um, encourage anyone to get involved in that. Absolutely. Like you said, you've been involved for nine years, and the guys in Aussie have been doing it one or two years longer than that. Um, and you said you're sort of now feeding back into to the Aussie guys with, with the golf. Um, how are they sort of thinking about this thing as, as it moves, you know, through the decade? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, we've definitely evolved over time. Like when you, if you go all the way back to when Movember started 15 years ago in Australia, um, you know, uh, a non-traditional charity, you know, based around growing a moustache. I mean, how, you know, who would have thought, you know, that, that concept or that idea could grow into the largest men's health organisation in the world, biggest funder of prostate cancer outside of government in the world, you know, um, one of the leading organisations trying to um, affect mental health and suicide prevention. Like, it's, it's ridiculous to think. Um, and I'd say for the first um, four or five or six years, and certainly the first couple of years that I was involved, we very much um, were funders, you know, like we raised money. Um, it was phenomenal. Um, how much money we're able to raise through through moustache growth, um, <laughs> but but I also think it was when you look at it more deeply, um, you know there was so much out there for for men, uh, sorry for females and for children and for um, famine and for things overseas, and there was actually nothing um, dedicated to helping men. And when there was finally initiative 
um, that looked at things through a gendered lens and was trying to help men, people were like, oh, this is a good thing and jumped in behind it and it was able to, um, we were able to be successful. Now we, we have very much evolved. Um, we still fund a lot of things, but we also, we all, we also manage a lot of the programs. Um, and quite often that's in collaboration because we've grown to such a scale that, you know, the reality is no, it's very difficult for one organization to truly make significant change. Um, so we work a lot in collaboration, um, sometimes cross country, sometimes like in New Zealand, we work with, um, you know, other NGOs, we work with district health boards, um, we work with um, New Zealand Rugby, we work with ACC, uh, we work with FMG. So, and the point being that, um, you know, we've become, you know, a lot more proactive in overseeing the direction of our investments. Um, and we've, we've got uh, staff dedicated to help us do that internally, which has been pretty exciting. Like, for someone like myself who lives in the fundraising world and you're out there grinding, um, trying to fight the good fight and get people to um, donate to Movember to Men's Health, um, to then um, see an initiative, um, go to market that you're really, really proud of, uh, really motivates you to go around again. And so we've got to the stage now where we are um, significant funders of Men's Health, but not just funders, but we are um, very involved in, in the managing the, of those and and trying to make sure that they have the most effect as possible. So, yeah, we've, it has, it's, um, it's taken a wee while for us to be able to get to that stage, just more through resource rather than anything. Like, it's almost, dare I say, it's, you, you raise quite a lot of money in a short space of time. You know, like over the space of a couple of months, you're able to, to fundraise really efficiently because that's what we've set ourselves up to do and we do it well. Um, but to put a program into place that's truly effective where you look at it and you go, this is genuinely helping people in my country and potentially in other countries. Um, it takes a wee while and that's not a bad thing. That's because you've got to do it right. You know, you've got to get out there. You've got to um, truly look at the landscape, look at the work that's been done already. Make sure you don't duplicate, make sure you collaborate really, really well with other organizations who have expertise. Um, you know, and the example of that at the moment is one of the reasons we're working with New Zealand rugby on a program called Head First is because they have a delivery channel, you know, like they talk to men, you know, like on a regular basis and a large amount of men, you know, like the rugby community in New Zealand is about 60,000 men, um, but it's probably more than that as well if you count fans and or people who keep an eye on rugby. So to work with an organisation like that that has that audience and it's a pretty hard to reach group, um, then you know you've got a a really good chance of, of reaching men, working with an organization um, that has a lot of trust with that group. You know, it's talked to them for a long time. Um, so you've got a chance of that message being listened to as well and actually genuinely being able to change behavior. So that stuff sort of, that fizzes you up a wee bit and gets you going again and, and um, um, encourages you to, to, to keep going. So it's been, it's, it's been awesome to, and that's been a real evolution of certainly the time I've worked at Movember um, coming up nine years. Yeah, man, and, and how much was it of a boost was it that um, moment against silence in Hamilton mid midway through the year, you know, you're, you're a few months out from November and you've got this hugely powerful thing by, as you said, a, a voice that speaks to a lot of men. Mate, it was awesome. It was awesome in so many ways for so many different people. It was wicked for me just to, um, to see Movember um, evolve into an organisation where New Zealand rugby were... Um, happy to partner with, happy to trust as we took that concept to them um, and then happy to help us, well, happy to be a significant part of implementing it. And then, you know, to, to exactly to your point, to, to see it come to life at a rugby game with 20, 20 25,000 people there, also for it to be whatever the broadcast audience was for that match, to, for Sky to buy into that and broadcast it live as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then to see the reaction of the players um, of the rugby union themselves, of Brett Gosper, of, you know, people overseas going, wow, this is unreal. And it wasn't just a moment for New Zealanders and New Zealand rugby, but um, a big part of the reason we did it for that game as well is that mental health and suicide is an issue with the Pacifica community. So to do it with a, um, a match that involved the Tongan community um, was also um, pretty awesome. So you're right, mate. It was one, just to, to be able to do that, um, just... Um, shows where we've come to which is is awesome and also 
um, just knowing doing an activity like that had so many eyeballs on it um, mm. is, is again just um, it makes you um, want to keep going. Yeah, mate. And, and so on the sort of suicide prevention and mental health, I think I saw Karen Smith talking about um, suicide prevention the other day in, in a media conference or something like that. Um, and I was bringing up the topic about how, you know, in common media, they're not allowed to specifically talk about it. Um, and someone was mentioning that that may be changing because the, the data on that doesn't seem to be working. As we know, our, our stats, particularly with men, are continuing to rise. Um, what, what do you think it's like seeing an all black halfback speak about suicide? And, and two, where, where do you, are you having much to do with the way that the media portrays those sorts of stories? Yeah, it's all, I mean, like you say, it's probably is getting a little bit outdated now, but for a long time, the media um, wouldn't, um, certainly wouldn't write the word suicide in their articles. And, and if even at the, and this has changed a little bit, but they even wouldn't even necessarily mention that the person had taken their own lives or, or reference it in any way whatsoever. It was sort of um, just more insinuated. But, um, you know, and the reason for that was, um, you know, there might have been a bit of information around, or there's certainly some people who believe in contagion. So if you, mm -hmm. you know, if you cite the issue and how someone did it and, and what they actually did, that there is a fear that that might um, increase the chances of, of other people thinking, oh, they're in a similar position. Perhaps that's the only course of action for them as well if this person's doing it. Um, but I think now you're starting to see, um, you know, that shift a little bit around, and um, we need to be a bit more open and honest around the issue and if we um, continue to you know not be open and honest about it not talk about it um, that we're never really going to truly address it and I've probably the thing that's probably two things have changed that one un unfortunately the statistics aren't coming back you know they're not improving um, if anything they've got a touch worse so um, you know not talking about it in the media anyway certainly is not statistically doesn't look like it's helping if you just look at the harshest of numbers um, but also um, we are getting a number of of influential organizations and people um, who are one acknowledging the issue you know and so to you to continue to use the example New Zealand rugby um, they want to they acknowledge that this is an issue it's an issue within their own community and they want to do something about it so they're taking a leadership role um, and so you did right, mate, when you start seeing people like Steve Hansen and Aaron Smith talking in global press conferences about the issue and, and how, and not just saying like, that was, that was a powerful piece, mate, because he said, um, you know, the All Black coach who's in charge of, you know, in theory, um, a, a team of people or a group of people who are probably seen as exactly what masculinity is meant to be, you know, like All Blacks, rugby players, um, you know, to say we've got to allow people to be vulnerable um, and when they are vulnerable, we've got to see that as, as a bit of strength and not as weakness. Like, it's pretty powerful stuff and we weren't there two or three years ago. So it's, it's, um, it's definitely, we're definitely seeing a, um, a change in perceptions around mental health. Yeah, that was one of the most powerful things about uh, Dr. Paul Woods sort of realisation with, with what drove his decisions as a youngster, what drives his decisions now. He sort of said it's still about um, being a man and being masculine, but the lens and the framework that he puts that toward, uh, uh, puts towards that is that vulnerability and, and intelligence about how he feels really, you know, is what he now sees as strength. And I, and I think that's a powerful message to keep hitting home. And, and I know he's you know, speaking to a lot of people these days and, and again, um, you know, saying about from an international level, you know, more and more people speaking about it. Of course, Tim Ferriss uh, opened up his TED talk with the fact that as a university student, he was pretty close to going through it. But then, you know, someone like that who, who's massively influential at bringing up tools and tactics and, and skills and, and stuff to then implement, you know, when you're feeling bad, using something like fear setting, you know, what is the total worst thing that can happen and actually... Uh, is it so bad? Um, yeah, like you say, it's the conversations happening um, almost by force, isn't it? When, when more and more people are connected to a tragedy like that, uh, and they have a look back at what has been done and what's been done, they sort of, you know, that passion and that drive to to help starts to kick in, and and, uh, and unfortunately, more and more people are exposed to that 
you know, that's one of the positives and negatives of, of this digitally connected world is that we're, we're all exposed to it. And, and um, a lot of the times the story bypasses the media and so the truth comes out and, and people realize that, hey, this is a, this is a big thing. Yeah, totally. And I think too, so, like, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, mental health is such a general statement, you know, to say we need to improve our mental health. Mental health is such, it's such a big thing and it's an entirety. Like, um, it's like saying we need to improve our physical health. There's so many elements to physical health, you know, like what, what does, what does that mean? You know, like, um, so our mental health is the same and, and, you know, there are times when, um, you know, because of, a whole number of things. Someone they may need medication. They may need, um, you know, professional help, and that's absolutely fine because that's what they require. For other people, um, you know, they might not need that. Um, they might just need, um, you know, a change of mindset, a change of lifestyle, a change of circumstance, a better connection to community, stronger relationships, like, and those things can really, really help. Um, so it's not one size fits all. And the thing that sometimes frustrates me a little bit is if. Some people think, oh, God, we're having this mental health conversation again. You know, I need to give all my staff mental health days and we need to get a whole lot of beanbags in the office and people need to work where they want to work, when they want to work. And we need, you know, and they think it's all fluffy and soft stuff. And, yeah, hey, sometimes someone might need a mental health day if that's what they want to call it, but they just might need a day off. That's okay. But also, um, it's, it's, it's not about that. You know, we have the majority of people like their job. They want to work hard. They love their family. They want to do the best they can for their family. Like a bloke really just wants to have purpose. You know, like mm. he just wants to have purpose. You know, we want to feel like we have our place in the world and we're doing it well. Um, and so, you know, it's not, it's not about, oh, you know, everyone needs time off and we, we don't need to, you know, to work hard or, or that's absolutely not the case at all. Like the majority of people, um, are the complete opposite. They actually, they want meaning and calling and purpose in life and they want to be fulfilled. And so it's the complete opposite. It's just making sure that we, um, at the heart of all the things we do, all the initiatives we do, there's the, the thing at the front of all that is that it's, it's relationships based and it's personal based. It's not, it's not taking mental health or, or HR or corporate responsibility and turning it into a digital platform and tick a box and, and away you go. Like it's, you know, we've still got to know each other. Um, instead of sending emails to someone who's 50 meters away, just go and have a chat to them um, because so many things can be misinterpreted in an email. Um, you know, just it's all, it's that stuff that I think is where we can make some really substantial gains um, around still making sure that, you know, um, the personal relationship is at the core of everything we do. People skills are still at the core of everything that we do. Yeah, and, that, and that's been quite fascinating talking to a couple of couple of guys um, involved with corporate wellness in the terms of you know getting people moving and eating right. It's it's not so much been the the exercise, but it's been the byproduct of the exercise. The as you just touched on there, the purpose of of what they're working towards and, and the whole office unit or, or business unit coming together as a team towards a goal um, that's exclusive of work and, and then the, the follow over um, into into the job and into the employment um, scene has, has been quite fascinating to see that that's been the, the key outcome. Yeah, oh, totally. And there's like, um, yeah, I agree. And, and the reality is like sometimes I think works, some workplaces feel a bit overburdened. You know, they're like, God, shit, this is, we're just trying to, run a good organization here and, and um, just trying to keep our, our head above water and, and turn a profit and be able to pay everyone. Mm. And we've also got to deal with all this as well. But, you know, we, as the majority of us spend a huge amount of time at work, you know, so we just, if we um, can make this a place where we at least know each other and respect each other, um, I think we've got a much better chance of it, of being a place that people want to go and, and some people need, you know, some people need to be, they, they thrive in, in, in environments where they um, really like their work colleagues and all that. And some people actually just need a bit of their time as well. Um, they just, you know, we're all a little bit different. So my point being, unfortunately, for a lot of this stuff, it's not one size fits all. Um, but if we know each other well, then we've got a better chance of respecting each other and we've got a better chance of being able to be comfortable working with each other. So, 
Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. Um, and I actually sympathize a little bit with work and schools sometimes because it's, um, you know, the answer to everything so often is, oh, we need to get this into schools. We need to get this into workplaces more. Um, and they're all tr already trying to do so much. Um, so I think um, it is a challenge, but if we can um, do things that where personal relationships are at the core of those initiatives, then, then I think they'll be the most valuable. <clears throat> yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. And um, yeah, it does take a little bit of nuance often and, and not a, oh, this works for me. Uh, so everyone yeah. should do it sort of stuff. <laughs> no, I'm, totally, I'm, I'm the same as you, I think, mate. I love being physically active. I wish I could be more physically active. Um, but work and family sometimes gets in the way. But like when I go for a run or do something, geez, it clears the head and it makes me feel so much better. But that doesn't, that, that's not necessarily the fix for everyone or, or, or a tool for everyone. You know, someone, they might like reading a book, they might like listening to music, they might like going to a show, they might, you know, like, um, and if that's their thing, um, just being able to make sure that there is the opportunity um, to be able to do that um, in a realistic way, then so be it. But we've got to know that stuff, you know. Um, not everyone wants to do the 10,000 step challenge every month, you know, and, and get frustrated when the whole workplace has to. But, um, but I mean, those are still great initiatives. But my point being, you know, unfortunately, it isn't one size fits all. We've just got to try and find out what does fit everyone. And that speaks to exactly what your one of your points was there, that it comes to that, you know, interactive level of you know, instead of sending an email, just talk to that person that's two cubicles away. Um, yeah. and, and if you're the uh, HR manager or, or you're the boss, it's actually going into that first word and human going, going and engaging with that person on a human level and, and hearing yeah. their, their passion and, and what they what they want out of it, you know, why they're there, you know, you know songs and um, stuff, exactly right, and right. stuff. I, I couldn't agree more. And like we talk do in November, we go into a lot of workplaces and we talk to a lot of um, senior managers and HR departments because they, you know, one of their initiatives might be Movember for the month, which is fantastic. Um, and we, you know, a lot of the th times I say like, you know, if, if you find it hard um, to, to talk to your staff or to get to know your staff and, and um, put it in the diary, like we put going to the gym in the diary, put meetings in the diary, we put all these different things in the diary like formalize it and go right for this half an hour I'm going to talk to three staff members and like if you go and talk to someone and say what did you get up onto the weekend and they say I went to the art gallery um and you're like oh right shit okay that's that's the sort of stuff you're into you know mm -hmm. like it, it and then that one conversation you're a little bit more informed um in your decisions going forward and that next Monday you know you can ask them a genuine question about their weekend did you go and do this and like it'll change their perception of you as a leader as well. Like I've seen it happen, you know, like, um, and as I said, we don't all have to go and have beers after work together. We don't have to be best friends, but if, you know, you have the ability to at least have um, some sort of conversation with the majority of your colleagues, it goes a long way with them. You know, they've gonna, they're going to be um, a lot more willing to do the tasks at hand if they um, believe that, you know, you give a bit of a shit. Mm. You know, that's really cool. Mate, uh, last time we spoke uh, about this time last year, you just played, uh, had the golf as well. Um, we spoke about guys like Jay Reeve and, and um, Art Green sort of pushing the mo and, and, and doing lots of work. And, and yep. now there's sort of a, a new wave of guys, you know, you've got like Willie Wairua out there, um, you know, making sure people are, as you say, open and transparent and, you know, having a moment and all that sort of stuff, you know, just those little, little tools and, um, Ant Needle and those guys at Short and Wides, they were in Short and Wides, you know, just yep. you know, popping up, the, the cricketers, the All Blacks. Uh, what is it, you know, it must be heartwarming to see that it's part of the vernacular now and, and you know, guys sporting a bow at all times of the year. Uh, it must be bloody, bloody cool. Mate, it is. We're sort of, it's awesome. Like, you you certainly don't have to try and announce or, or launch Movember as such, you know, every every year now because it has become a part of the calendar and people expect moustaches to pop up or already be around at that time of year which is fantastic but what's probably even better is that perhaps when I started you know people knew November oh, moustaches maybe to stretch they might know men's health but now um, you know when people see those moustaches they know it's November they also know a lot more about what it's about because of um, 
everything because of everything we've done, um, the things we fund, the partnerships we have, the great people who are well known, who help us take those messages forward, like those guys um, that you've mentioned. Um, so your every year you start from a higher base, if that makes sense. You know, you feel like every year um, you're able to get a get a a, a deeper and, and better message or a new message to the guys around the country because of the work that's been done in the past and also because um, you know people like essentially the majority of people like really the majority of people are good people like they want to help um, you know Kiwis are pretty low key about it they're very generous you know like we they're, they're generous um, we get over 70,000 individual donations every year to November, November, you know, like that is, that's a hell of a thing. Every single year we get that and that allows us to go off and, and fund programs trying to help men. So, and no one kicks up too much of a fuss about it. Like a lot of people you'll say, give some of these bigger organizations or bigger um, fundraisers a buzz and say, mate, that's amazing. What can I do? Like, what do you need me to do? And they go, no, nah, no, nah, it's all good, mate. I just want to get, I just want to support it. Just want to get in behind it. Um, you know, they might have a, a, a personal reason or, or a, um, you know, they're connected to the causes, but they don't want to publicise it too much. They just, they just want to do their bit. And so um, it's, it's, it's very encouraging. Um, and, you know, we are definitely seeing a change in the types of conversations blokes are having at the moment as well, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, man. So what is your sort of, you know, outside of the, the hot month, what does your sort of day-to-day look like? Totally, mate. It'll take, it probably takes us, uh, you know, till the end of January to to really tie up the month of November itself and and um, get every last buck in and and say thank you to everyone um, that needs to be thanked and and that side of things. And then and then very much after Christmas we get into the the phase around. Okay, we know where we stand. Are we going to continue to fund these programs? Are we going to look at new programs? Um, we'll go out to the sort of the market, I suppose, and and see if there's any initiatives that people want to put forward for funding. Um, so we sort of go through that process. And also we have a number of fantastic commercial partners like Barkers, like Gillette, um, who um, are very, very supportive, not just in their commercial support, but they also get their staff involved. You know, they participate, they fundraise as well internally. Um, so we go through the process of seeing if they'd like to be involved again. Um, and then before you know it, where that sort of gets to, you know, April, May, June, and we're starting to think about November again and, and trying to put things in place. And as you know, um, we probably, we do a lot more communications um, campaigns. We, we still really only do the, the one significant fundraising campaign, but we do Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. We do World Suicide Prevention Month. Um, you know, we do November itself as well. We do the November Masters Golf Series. I have a podcast like you, mate, which is quite a hard case. Um, and, you know, we do, we do a lot more communications um, outside of the month of November because, as we always say, you know, the moustache is, is 30 days, but men's health every day. So we can always be always thinking and, and prioritising um, our health no matter what time of the year it is. Nice. So talk, talk me through the, the podcast, mate. <laughs> Mate, it was, it was, well, I mean, it was sort of actually probably a little bit like yourself, um, just a little bit inspired about by all the people who are just out there giving it a go, you know, like just a bit of bravery to kind of <laughs> just put something together and, and start having a chat. And, but that's what I quite liked about it as well as there was, you know, as long as you've got a computer and can do a recording and you're able to got enough IT capabilities to upload it um, to where it's got to go. Um, you know, there's not, in a world that's got so much, so much media in it, so much communications, it's all so competitive and it's all so, some of the, the content and the comms all spin around so quickly. Um, it was nice to have a bit of control, you know, of some, of a, of a bit of content. And the one thing that we have got at Movember is, um, you know, we're obviously spent a long time um, talking to men. So we're able to, I think, um, we know how to talk to men about men's health, um, and, and that is there is a little bit of an art to that. And also, to like some of the people you mentioned, we've had some fantastic people support us over the years who have got great stories to tell. Really, really interesting people. Um, it's called a few good men, and it's not it's not as much uh, um, 
it's not necessarily a men's health podcast. If a men's health issue comes up, then we'll talk about it and we'll we'll weave those those themes through. But as much as anything, it's just talking to interesting people, interesting blokes about the things that they've done done in life. Because so much of our comms and our media is so short these days. It's you know you don't do a video for over more than thirty seconds. You <laughs> you know like people do nine Facebook posts a day and it just you just scroll through your feed and you know yeah we don't read the paper we don't sit down and read the paper really very much anymore we quickly look at something on our phone and then we're on to the next thing so to sit down and chat to someone like I'm doing with you now um it's a bit old school actually and it's quite good fun just to just to chew the fat with someone you know yeah and so with with the names that have come from a few good men that's fantastic <laughs> yeah it's probably um you know, I'm a I'm a pretty bog standard, um, stereotypical bloke, and I, you know, as a young fella, you know, Top Gun, A Few Good Men, Last of Mohicans, or you know, all the all the normal movies were like um, were watched repeatedly. Um, so uh, it was actually my brother who thought of the name, and and we thought, shit, that's a cracker because we we didn't want to be called. We decided straight away we didn't want to be. The Movember Men's Health Podcast, or so, or something along those lines. Um, mm. We wanted to, we just, we wanted it to be um, talking to interesting blokes and just, and, you know, good men. A few good, talk to a few good men, a few good yarns, a few good chats, and so it uh, it it fitted really well. Did a quick bit of research and saw that we wouldn't be getting a letter from anyone around copyright issues or anything like that. So <laughs> um, yeah, so away we went um yeah mate and it's been awesome and probably the same as you 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 know you you pick up a few things along the way and there's a bit of a bit of an art to it um but it's been it's been awesome and it's been great to talk to some people that i know who have got to know over the years and actually have a really good chat to them and the majority of them are, are bloody interesting and i probably always um learn a few things that i didn't know about them as well and and a lot of them i did know quite well and it just goes back to that whole having a platform where men can truly connect and have have a have a actually a really long yarn yeah um and so is there a few of those across the november platform or, or once again you guys yeah, are leading the way <laughs> yeah yeah no no we've done, i think we've done about 15 which has been cool um and you know they were because a lot of the people that we knew were sports people we started a lot of them were with sports people because that's just happened to be some people that we we knew really really well um so that was cool and then but then we've also um done a couple with um some red champions from the dgr which is the distinguished gentleman's ride which we're the, the beneficiaries yeah. of so it was and and those guys are they're an amazing community so it was great to talk about them talk to them very cause driven um so yeah it was uh yeah we did 15 and um we I don't, we're probably not going to do any more this year, um, but we probably will do some more again, some more next year um, as well, sort of in that mid-year period. And and um, like you say, just yeah, try and uh, you try and get a little bit better at better at it as you go. But the actually the the gold is in all the stuff that that they say. Apologies, that's my kids flying yeah, past. It's brilliant, mate. I've, I've got plenty of podcasts on here of my daughter running through the door or hanging on the door. Yeah. I think when yeah, I was yeah, speaking yeah. to Aunt Nita, she even hopped up on my knee and said good day. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, mate, Aunt's a top boy. Um, really, really good boy. Yeah, Loves yeah. a hunt, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. even, even, uh, even when he's, you know, two months into bow, bow hunting, he does, does the big jobs. It's, it's, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you brought up your brother there. Um, what's it like working with, with your, your first best mate? Yeah, no, it's... It's hard case actually. Like we're um, we're very similar, almost too similar at times. And like uh, um, we have a couple of other colleagues who, who I think we if we have like a proper work meeting, we spend the first fifteen minutes just talking rubbish and and giving each other a lot of banter before we get into the, to the real stuff. But no, it's been great. Um, you know, it's I I genuinely say, it's actually made us closer. You know, because you, you know we spend a lot of time together. We do get along really well. You know, we're very similar. You know, similar interests. Both both love a bit of sport. Love both love Top Gun and a few good men and all that old <laughs> stuff. But that's what we're brought up with. Um, and so it, it is. We. Um, but he's he's. What's also been fantastic as well is I'm 
on next birthday's 40. Um, and he's, um, we share a mum, but not a dad. So he's 25 um, and he's just a younger guy, mate, you know, and the world changes and it's good to have um, a younger person with their thing on the pulse to make sure that I'm not, uh, you know, not getting too old and archaic and, and you know, missing the, the next... Missing the trends. Yeah, the trends or the next new thing because we are we have a lot of young guys participating in Movember over the last couple of years, which is awesome to see. And um, I think a lot of that's to do is to do with him um, really tapping into his community and, and keeping me up to date with, um, you know, what's really relevant to that group of people. Um, and as I said, like, sometimes I get a bit frustrated with some of the things you hear, things that get just get um, bandied around, they just get repeated and all of a sudden they become truth about the younger generation don't want to work or all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Complete bullshit. Like, um, those young guys, are, they are up for it. You know, they want to work hard. You know, work's a bit different to what it used to be, but, like, um, they're, they're, they're exactly the same as we were 10, 15, 20 years ago, the hard case, the social. Um, yeah, they make bad decisions, um, but predominantly they make good ones. Um, and as long as they learn from them, um, they'll be fine. And, you know, thank God there wasn't Facebook or those sort of things around when I was a uni student because, you know, I've always got to remember that any time I want to make some, you know, old comments. So, but the, <laughs> young, the younger generation, um, um, I think, you know, they're different to us. We're a 40-year-old or a 50-year-old, but actually they're, they're, they're similar as well. They just, um, they want a purpose. They want things to do in life. They want to work hard. Um, they want to have time with their mates. Um, the world's just a bit smaller, you know, so there's opportunities for them to potentially get around the world or be exposed to a few new, a few different things. Work's different, you know, to what it used to be. Um, but, you know, they're essentially, um, you know, good buggers, the ones I come across anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, it, um, they won't, you won't quite have it here on TikTok yet, dancing around to, to different songs with your mates on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it, mate. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. Uh, and you also brought up a good point there that, um, and it goes back to that human level. We, we, when it comes down to what people want, like you said, some purpose, and and for a, a lot of the way that uh, our society is gamed, having having a, a job that you go to and, and bring bring home the bacon, so to speak, is is a massive purpose to what we we have. And and if you if you're floundering and in, in, in your own own space that's where where trouble starts to have so you're absolutely right you know from a fundamental level people do want to get there and and, and feel valued and so you know that that's a very offhand statement and, and like you said you, you've got to consider you know what you were like back then before you you throw out a, a sort of um, cynical view of, of what's going on oh absolutely mate like we everyone um everyone wants you know everybody but you know i think men in particular want a purpose, want to feel like they're adding value to whatever whatever environment they're in at that time, whether it's a young person, whether it's a sports or community or cultural environment, whether it's family, whatever. And and that's at the essence of, of what being a bloke is. And, and yeah, hey, there were times when I was a young fella and, you know, I also, you know, loved, didn't like, didn't want to miss out on anything, you know. So sometimes you'd get on the piss midweek and, and you know, be a bag of rubbish at work on a Thursday or a Friday, but that's, that's about life. That's about growing up. Um, you know, those things change over time as long as you don't continue to make the same mistakes time and time again. Um, that's just a part of living, part of growing up. I still make bad decisions today. Um, but you know, you live and learn. And, and so I think we've just got to be a bit more patient sometimes, um, with each other and, and make sure we'll, you know, we're trying to, walk a day in their shoes or at least try and be considerate of, of what's going on in their lives. You know, like if someone's has missed a deadline, just making sure it's, um, you know, not because other parts, other departments and work are pulling on them at the same time or the, or the things that, you know, understanding, making sure that the things at home are, are running smoothly, etc. cetera. Um, because people are proud and they might not tell you sometimes. And, and so, um, you know, I think, I think we've always got to try and, um, you know, remember those things before we pull the trigger, I suppose. Yeah, and I, and I guess um, the flip side of that is if, if you're the one that's uh, accountable 
then you've only got yourself to to sort of blame or whatever. But if, if you're also accountable to a bunch of people as you know as an employee, you also have to deal with that added shame. And, and I guess for me in, in my sort of generation bracket of of why I think it is a lot of it is around us trying to um, find lead, leadership, find mentorship, find people to sort of let us know you know where you can go wrong, where you can go right. And, and I guess I don't know what it's like another ten years younger, but um, I'd imagine it's a bit similar there where you're looking for somebody to, and I guess it comes from that real validation age of, of, of you know, everyone, get, you said about everyone participating and getting involved and, and getting acknowledged. Um, that's probably even worse for, for someone that's been brought up with that to then go into the workforce and there's a boss at the top and a couple of layers of management and you'll, you'll be working away worrying and they're doing a good job and, and all the pressures of that, you know, to have somebody from, and up an echelon of, of age or, or, or role come on and, and you know, um, come and sit in and as you said and ask you how your weekend was and not even worry about the work just yeah it would be a massive release of, of stress and and you know might allow them to open up and ask a few questions to get some advice and get some guidance um, and and yeah again create a fantastic relationship across across the the um, the work environment I, I totally agree mate and I certainly know you know, I can only speak from experience, but, um, you know, we, as I said, we don't have to be best friends with everyone at work, but it is, um, you do appreciate it when you have a relationship. And also when you have a decent relationship with people at work, I actually think um, it certainly enabled me to handle criticism as well, better, you know, like when you, when you know, when you respect your senior management, um, you know, when you know they've taken the time out a little bit to understand you, um, when they walk the walk as well and you know that they're, um, they're good people and they're working hard when you have got something wrong um, and they let you know that, um, I think it's a bit easier to take on board that criticism and, and try and get it right next, round, next time around. It doesn't always have to, you know, you can't put band-aids on things and it doesn't, it's not about always telling, only telling people the good stuff. Um, mm. But I think it's a bit easier to take on board criticism or, or bad stuff or, or um, objective criticism um, when you've got respect for the people that are giving that to you. Um, yeah, for sure. I certainly know it's, it's um, I've, I've found that easier in, in my environment when I've got things wrong, um, when I've got a real respect for my, for my manager. Um, I can take on board that. I take that criticism a lot, a lot better than from someone that perhaps I just haven't built that rapport with and haven't got that respect yet. Mm. Mate, um, it's, what are we today? <laughs> The tenth of November, and this will be coming out on the fifteenth. Um, what can people expect from the second half of the month, mate? We're sort of in terms of the fun stuff. I think um, with our campaign, our, our creative campaign, the stuff that you see, the images, the words, it's very much around acknowledging um, that there's no such thing as a bad moustache. You know, any moustache is a good moustache, um, <laughs> and you know, certainly through my eyes, <laughs> that's. That's absolutely the case, you know, and, and in fact, in some ways, you know, those people who really struggle to grow a moustache, I've got the utmost respect for because it can be a tough month sometimes, a bit of ridicule comes their way, but they push through and they, they support us and they normally raise a few bucks. Um, so we're trying to give a nod to those people, whatever you grow will save a bro, you know, whatever, whether it's one moustache, one donation, one conversation, it all helps and that's the success of Movember. Um, and the other thing that we're really pushing this month um, is sort of reframing um, that happy hour concept. So, you know, we're all, we're all familiar with happy hour, um, but we, we're encouraging um, people and also workplaces to um, use that happy hour to say, like, let, let people knock off work at five o'clock and use it to go see a friend. Um, on the way home from work between five and six, pick up the phone call a friend, reach out, um, and it's sort of an acknowledged, you know, and we're trying to do it in a fun way, which is what we always do with Movember. A lot of creative around saying, you know, your phone actually makes calls as well. You can actually use it for phone calls. Um, and that, um, you know, that acknowledgement that we, we're always, the excuse for a lot of things in life is that we're time poor, you know, we're time poor. Um, so let's, you know, whether it's a, an employee supporting us, or whether it's just encouraging a person to change behaviour, just using that commute home from work or knocking off work early um, to catch up with your mates. Because I know so often when I go into a, a large male workplace, 
I'll say to them, you know, for the guys here who are married, you know, when was the last time you talked to the groomsman at your wedding? And mm -hmm. you might say three months or six months or nine months or 12 months. And there is a lot of people who will be over 12 months, over 15 months, you know, without talking to who are supposedly their best mates. And I think that's, that's, that's a guy, you know, like that is a bloke, you know, that's girls aren't like that. You know, they talk to their best friends bloody three times a day, let alone every day. So, um, you know, but so often, and I'm, sometimes I'm guilty of that, you know? Um, so it's about, you know, if you can, been saying a lot this month, particularly when it comes to mental health, you sit back and look at the issue and you go, geez, that's a significant issue. What can I possibly do about it? You know, it's such a big issue. What can I do? But if you focus on your best friends, your colleagues that you spend the most amount of time with, with your immediate community, if you focus on those five people around you um, and try and have a good relationship, let them know that you would be there for them in any, in any time um, and vice versa. And then, you know, make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're, um, spending quality time with them. Um, if we all did that, you know, with those five or six or seven people in our closest environment, um, I think we would make a real significant impact on some of the more challenging things for blokes. So I think it's about, for men, it's about simple actions um, and breaking it down and normalising it a wee bit. And so those are the sort of things we're going to be trying pumping out. So hopefully the moustache can create a bit of, a bit of those sort of behaviours as well. Yeah, man. No, I... Uh, me and my, my old flatmates we have a little bit of a chat and, and you'd be right it'd be sort of once a month or so that we you know start up a little bit of banter on, on the chat but this past Labor Weekend we made a, a, a conscious effort to all meet up in Mount and that's why I was up there and mate coming away from that weekend was so regenerating and, and you know like you said about with the podcast you, you talk to people that you you would consider good mates in that you think you know really well and then you come away going, oh, I didn't realise that. Or, or like one of my mates right now, he's sailing from Hobart to Bluff. And it was kind of like, oh. <laughs> you know, well, one week after Labor Weekend, I'm like, oh, shit, is that what you're up to? Like, well, I knew you were into sailing, but man, that's, that's a big undertaking. Yeah. Like, yeah, spending some quality time, and, and apparently it's my love, love language, but um, spending some quality time together is, yeah, it's just... It, yeah. It, it, Builds you up, and, and we are humans, and, and tribes hugely important. And, and unfortunately, um, our way our society fits us into these sections that you know, we've got neighbours that we barely talk to. It's um, it, it's quite yeah. a, and it's, yeah. it's a cool thing to take a moment and take a moment to consider. Well, when when did I actually last speak? Like you said, your, your groomsman, your best mate. Yeah, I know, and it's and that's where, that's where I think our our focus should be like your neighbor's probably a good one as well. You know, the people you work with all the time, your neighbor, your best friends, you know, like if it's, it's, if you can have good relationships with those people that you, and you know, should be interacting the most with, I think, you know, that's a fantastic place to start for someone who doesn't maybe necessarily know where you should start, you know? So I think that's a, a good spot. Awesome. So um, of course we'll have it in the show notes, but where do people find you November? Um, and the podcast yeah mate so it's um still um www.movember.com and that's our one-stop shop for all things whether it's um growing moving hosting donating all and, and knowing anything about what we do the things we fund um that's our spot and then the podcast is called a few good men and that's on itunes soundcloud um iheart radio um i think is the, the main spots to to hear it and as I said yeah there's 15 or 16 episodes up there with some good folk like um Richie McCaw and Peter Fulton and um okay. a couple about like the basketball so there's a couple into the into the basketball a couple about the DGR um yeah it's been it's been uh it's been good times um Anton Leonard Brown did an awesome one um before he went away to the World Cup he was he was really open actually um that was that was great I um He's my brother's mate, and it was my brother said the same thing. He said he said some things today that you know I didn't even know myself. So um, that's that was pretty cool too. So I enjoyed that. Yeah, someone that's been coached by Peter Fulton uh, in rugby, ironically enough, um, he's an absolute champ. Uh, the oh, unassuming man is Peter Fulton. <laughs> oh, man. He is just one serious, down to earth guy who is you know, happens to be a pretty talented sportsman, but you just he's just a casual unit, isn't he? He is yeah. unassuming. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. So um 
what what should you leave us with? What what is it? Talk to the five people that it mean the most. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's the big the big takeaway. If if anything else, like um, try and have an effect with the people closest to you. I I think. Um, and and if we all did that collectively, then um, I think we could make some pretty significant change. So yeah, I'd say go out and um, you know try and have the strongest relationships with the people closest to you. I think is the the message. Awesome. We'll uh, put it there and um, park yeah. it. Thanks so much for coming back on. We've been working. Nah, no worries, mate. I appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll uh, cross paths face to face at some stage in the future. Yeah, man. Cheers. We'll press stop there. Absolutely. Cheers, brother.